Hey, this is Amy with Flower Moxie, and we're going to build a bride, bridesmaid bouquet very similar to the way I built the bridal with that greenery foundation. And so we have some naggy, some agonis. I do want to say that my agonis, it came in green because it hadn't gotten cold, and once it gets cold, it turns that black, brown, burgundy shade. So this is sprayed out with some Design Master. I used maroon, you can use burgundy. I have um, baby blue eucalyptus, standard eucalyptus, astrantia, and I wanted to save this to show you when you're building bouquets, a lot of times you just want this top part, and so you'll want to rip these pieces off, but it's not trash because we're going to use this, um, we're going to use these pieces in another video in a um, compost centerpiece. But it's really hard to get used to like tearing so much off of a flower or off of greenery. But I just keep it off to the side and the same happens like with greenery. So I may like pull those few pieces off because we can tuck it in into like cake flowers or a boutonniere. So, okay, let's get started. Just like the bridal, we're just gonna start by creating that greenery foundation. And it's not a bad idea to show, like if your bridesmaids are gonna help you, to show them this video and everybody can make their own. Let's check to my enough. We're gonna think of our hand as a vase. I don't know if I'm gonna add this, not sure yet. But I like to have my greenery clean, um, the stems all clean, it makes it easier to work with. And just know like the first one's gonna take a while, it's always hard to get started. We're not gonna make it quite as big as the um, bridal bouquet, obviously. That's one of my pet peeves, is when I look at like pictures on Pinterest and all the bouquets are the same size or they're all the exact same flowers. Um, obviously with bridesmaid bouquets, you want them to be cohesive. You want them to have the same flavor as the bridal, but I usually like leave elements out and I more simplify a bridesmaid bouquet. So. If I used anemones in the bridal bouquet, I'm not going to put them in the bridesmaid because those are such like, I have some here. Those are such a statement flower that I want to set that bridal bouquet apart. I think the goal is to have the eyes go towards the center, towards the bride. So I like my bridesmaid bouquets to be like supporting actresses. I always have to work with a mirror and see it, especially like in a video, I have to see it um, as it would look when someone's walking down the aisle holding it. So I have some of this dark, um, this is Israeli Ruscus. I spray painted this as well. We'll put a little bit in. I have these, we're working with quicksands and I have these red heart roses and they're definitely not a primary red, they're like a deep wine so to me this is like a really good wine palette i wouldn't so much call them burgundy though if you want them to be burgundy i would suggest buying them and getting a can of design master and just lightly hitting them to where it goes in that darker shade we have our greenery foundation just like the bridal bouquet and we're going to start backfilling with our strongest flowers first and we'll end with our like texture and more delicate blooms so i have one of these deep red heart roses. I'm gonna throw it off to the side because it's it's so large, I'm not gonna like plop it directly in the middle. I typically like curve something a little bit off. Um, since I have this lighter eucalyptus, I'm gonna bring in um, this quicksand rose. And my hand is relaxed. I'm pretending that my hand is the vase. And sometimes when you're driving things in, it can get a little hard, especially at the end. And I usually have to like twist it um, to get this in. So we're doing like a little bit of color blocking. I'm already liking where this is going. Where's my quicksands? Go ahead and do 
have these um, burgundy mini carnations and I love them. They're just, you know, people were really anti-carnation for a long time, but they're so pretty, especially those fancy ones, but they just make for a really great addition. I say that and then I take it out. I always have my recipes when I'm doing a wedding, like I need to know what to order and the quantities and things like that. But it's not until I really go to build that bouquet do I know for sure what I'm going to put in it and how much. So let's add a little bit of thistle. I'm not so sure about what's happening here, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I feel like it's like a little bit too color blocked, but I'm going to just keep working with it and see um, how I feel about it once I add a few extra things. So. Try not to stress out. It's just flowers. You can always remove something. You can always add. Um, what I've always found is that you don't typically ever need to start over. When I was a new florist, I, if I didn't like it, I would just take it apart and start over. And that, that breaks down my flowers. It, it's frustrating. And a lot of times you just make a few small tweaks. So in my mind, like this one, probably needs to go, but I'll just go ahead and leave it for now. It's like find that one greenery that isn't working for some reason and just remove it. You can always put it somewhere else. I'm adding some thistle. Okay. I actually do think I like this spray painted. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about it. Okay, so let's add in, you could always stop here. On accent flowers, uh, typically a lot of my Moxie brides don't do a lot of accent flowers for the bridesmaid bouquets just because it elevates the price so quickly. But I think one to two of them, it's nice. And it will really make your bridal bouquet and your bridesmaid bouquet tie together nicely. So this is Chocolate Queen Anne's Lace. And I always, because it's so heavily textured, I usually just feel a few of them gives me the visual impact that I need. I'm actually loving this spray painted agonis and I didn't know how I'd feel about it. Okay. We've got some burgundy astrantia. So this is where I'm gonna try to bridge that weird like color block that I have. So this burgundy astrantia is kind of in between the level of darkness of this quicksand rose and this red heart. So I feel like maybe I can marry them together with it without it looking so like a line of color down the center. So at the very end, it's a little bit trickier to drive your flowers in, which is why we hold off on our delicates. Okay. So I'm gonna put a zip tie on it. And this allows me to change my grip. Like if your hand starts getting cramping and getting sore holding all of these, This is an 11 inch zip tie and I pull it to where um, it still holds my flowers relatively, relatively tight so I don't lose like the composition, um, but loose enough to where I can make adjustments. So I feel like I'm gonna take this out. I haven't liked it from the start. They just came in a lot bigger than what I had anticipated. And that's why recipe building, it's not always an exact science because like these quicksands and these um, red hearts are huge. So I just didn't need to use a lot of them. 
I like the shape of it. I, I, I'm loving everything about it. The one thing that I'm slightly concerned about is the fact that I have like four large blooms and I usually like odd numbers. So um, that's why I threw in that extra one, but it wasn't really working. I don't know, like, usually I don't like odd numbers, so like two, four, those things. I'm sure you obviously know what odd numbers are. Um, Eva, or, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so typically I don't like even numbers. Um, so I have like four large things, so I would probably want to introduce that fifth one, which is why I had that one rose hanging off to the side, but I didn't love it. So I'm gonna see if I can, kind of bury in something larger. Like, yeah, I feel like that would work. Right there. Maybe bring this guy out a little bit. You wanna create space and air. You don't want holes, but if you're going for a more organic look, you don't want it to just fall in, in on itself and be compacted. So sometimes you like lower things in and nestle it in and then you'll pull out um, some flowers to give it more dimension. You don't want everything on the same plane. So then I hold it against my body, I look in the mirror. This one's like happening right in the middle and I don't love that. So I'm gonna adjust my placement slightly. And these are the little tweaks that you do at the end. And we can do this easily because we have this zip tie on it. This is when we snip things off that's not working for us or that's in the way. I'm just not feeling it. I'm gonna have to take it out. Okay. Feel good about where it's at. I'm gonna replace my zip tie since I added some product and shifted some things around. And now I'm gonna tighten it down. And with bridesmaid bouquets, I almost always make them one-sided. Unless like the bride wants really round and we do, you know, hydrangeas or roses. But those bridesmaids, they'll lay them down all night long. So um, one-sided is really nice. I always like to cut my stem short. I don't like a lot of stems in the photos and it allows them to like tilt the bouquet. So if you have any questions then leave them in the comments below. Visit flowermoxie.com for your DIY flowers and thank you so much for joining us.